much talent in here. Oh my goodness. It, it is, and, but this is fun. And I like playing little games like this because even if you didn't get all the hits and even if you only got one or two things, it shows you that you really can connect. All you have to do is to be open to it. And Alyssa, I don't know if you've ever heard me say this, but I've said it to my students a million times. When you first start working with your intuitive abilities or reopening your abilities, it's like, it's like the faucets in an old house. You know, you go into the bathroom, you turn on the faucets and the water runs brown. There's sediment in it and it's gucky. However, right. if you allow the water to continue to flow, it starts to flow cleanly and clear. And that's the way psychic abilities are. In the beginning, some of what's coming through might not make sense. It, and even as you say it, it might not fit. But if you continue to allow yourself and trust the process, the water starts to run clear, which is why everybody should be working with their psychic abilities. Speaking of psychic abilities, Alyssa Kernan. Yes, mother. Welcome <laughs> to the Lightworkers Lab. I am so happy that you're here. My daughter, when she was growing up as a young child, was incredibly psychic. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on tonight is because I know we have a lot of parents in the lab, many of whom have sensitive children. And I think children are just getting more and more sensitive generation to generation. And so I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about what it was like for you to be a psychic kid and also for you to tell people that I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, no I'm not. you're gorgeous. I'm Hello. not joking. <laughs> I'm playing. You're not joking. We know it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like to be my daughter? No, really though, because there were so many, so many instances when you were growing up of paranormal activity I don't even know if you remember so talk about oh, some I of the them. <laughs> first memories that you have as a psychic kid and and how that made you feel and how you dealt with it okay um well uh when I was growing up um a lot of the spirits that I would see I was very visual um I could really see big details of them except for their faces that was one thing that was always omitted um, I was never, never able to make out any features. It was like, um, it was just a blank slate. Um, there was one that I remember that I'm sure you remember, um, where it was a guy in a baseball uniform mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. I was sitting, I saw him a couple times, like in hallways and stuff, but there was one time in particular where I saw him, um, in my half brother's room and I was in bed and you were there with me, I think. I think I remember that. Yep, um, yep. I was and, sitting on the bed with you. Yep. And you were freaked out. <laughs> um, well, you were so I, descriptive. You were just, you were describing and it was so descriptive and I, yeah. I was just getting, I was like, whoa. But anyway, go on. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, it's okay. Um, but I saw him in the doorway and I think I said something to the effect of like, okay, he's over there. And um, you were asking me questions. It was such a long time ago, but all of a sudden the uh, door slammed shut <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that was kind of, you know, a sign, a little, a little sign. That, um, well, I, the way I remember it was that you were like, mom, the baseball player is here again. And I came into your room and, and you were in bed and I sat on your bed and across the hall was the bedroom that you're talking about. And I said, well, where is he? And, and you said, he's standing right in the doorway. And I'm like, okay, well, can you describe him? Because I'm always like trying to figure out what are you seeing and how are you getting it, you know? And right. you said, well, he, you described his uniform and he, that he, he also looked dead as well. Like there was markings or blood or something, I forget. Um, and I asked you, well, does he feel negative or does he feel positive? Um, are you scared or not? And you actually really weren't scared. But as you were describing him, the doorway in which he was standing, that door slammed shut. Like the whole house was closed. It's like Chicago in the middle of winter. There's, you know, there's no doors Word. or windows open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it slammed shut. And I was like, oh, Lord, that was a bit startling. I, yeah. I do remember that. I also yeah. remember that you had a little spirit guide friend named John. Do you remember that? I do remember that. What do you remember yeah. about John? Um, oh, God been a long time but um he would just um he would just follow with me make sure I was being I was doing okay um I really I can't remember too much I have a few um that are peaked into my mind like there was um 
a spirit in our backyard. We had a big evergreen tree in the corner of it. And there was one time I was like eating breakfast or something and I just saw it and it was just like a little shape and then two white eyes and a mouth. And it would just nod its head or, or, or shake its head um, with answers and um, no negative energy. It was just kind of odd that it was off in a tree, just looking at me, kind of answering questions. But um, that's another one that's in that's, the forefront of my mind. Yeah, that was, that's a nature elemental. That's just a, mm -hmm. that's the spirit of the tree. And um, well, what I remember about John is that he would appear as a Brillo pad of light, like a bunch of squiggly lines. And he would appear at the corner of your bed and he would somewhat materialize and take the form of what looked like a teenage boy, older yeah. than you were at the time, six or seven. Yeah. Um, and, and he would talk with you and, but he would be like this weird spiral of light was the way that you would describe him. And he would come and visit you every night. I remember one night, cause I'm, you know, I'm intuitive. And a lot of times it was just me, you and Tutu, which is grandma, she, just me, you and grandma in that big house. And right. I felt like all this weird activity. So I walked out and I got this big whoosh of energy. You walked out of your bedroom and you said, mommy, do you see the nun? And you, and you just followed this pathway from in front of your door as the nun passed down the hallway and then went down the stairs and she had a rosary. Yes. You yes. Remember this? <laughs> I totally remember it. It was so hyper-realistic. I wasn't expecting it. It's just when you're, when you're a kid like that, it's just, it becomes just part of your everyday thing. It's just, okay. I saw well, a person. Not, not necessarily. I mean, I think that a lot of, a lot of children are told that it's just their imagination. They're told that they're making it up. They're told that it's demonic or the devil. And so you had a bit of an advantage because I grew up in much the same way. And so when you came and talked with me, I didn't say any of those things. Instead, I tried to just give you some framework by which to essentially claim your dominion. Do you know what right. dominion is? Mommy talks yes. about it in the in the lab a lot. I don't know if you know yes. about that. Okay. Yes. Check I know what dominion is. I use it around my apartment. I used it at my old apartment. I'm nobody's stepping in my space unless unless I know about it and I'm into it. So. That's right. So and I think it's so important, don't you, that instead of so because some kids get so afraid at that age, because there's so much activity and their little pineal glands are open mm -hmm. that they turn it off or they just pray for it to stop or they hide under the covers and yeah. spirit, big S spirit, God never wants to frighten you. And so if we ask and we intend for it, we can actually shut down those abilities. And now we have like 30, 40 and 50 year old women and men here in the lab who want to turn them back on. They remember being mediums as children and yeah. they shut it down and now they want to, they want to start activating this again. And, and you kind of, you're kind of in a similar space because I am right. Yeah. What, yeah. How would you describe your psychic abilities at this point? Um, they're very muddled. I would say um, I've been very wrapped up in jobs. Um, I had big life changes in the past couple of years. Um, recently got married. Like what? You're married. Um, Where, where's your wife? Where's her pretty face? <laughs> 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 uh, she's off to the side <laughs> okay hi Cara it's my other daughter Park. Yeah. you did get um, married I got married I moved um to Phoenix Arizona shout out to the people in Arizona hello and um I'm only 21 about to turn 22 and it was I went from doing absolutely nothing not having a job until I was 19 until Kara, my wife, whipped that into me. And then mm -hmm. I got a job, moved in, uh, moved, all that kind of stuff. What is that? My is it spirit? <laughs> There's no fire going on right now. But do you remember that? Do you remember that happening a lot when you were growing up? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> that used to happen quite a lot. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> We're here. I'm saying that they've been hearing stuff, too, in the, in the chat. They say they all heard something going on when we were on live. So that's... Oh, really? Uh, How weird. interesting. <laughs> I noticed that you said that you turned 21, almost 22, which, A, 
means you can buy mommy wine. Okay. And box B, wine. <laughs> box wine is fine. I'll tell you, you know, I, I will drink a box wine. I don't care. But B, <laughs> you are now adulting. And the thing with the pineal gland, which is the physical third eye right in the center of your head, is that by the time you hit your 20s, it is substantially degraded based on like the way you're living your life. And, you know, we're all eating processed foods and we're drinking pop and we're doing all the things we're doing that if we're not super proactive about taking care of our pineal gland and really taking care of our vibration, it'll just continue to decrease. So all those abilities that you had as a child were, were because your pineal gland was vibrating. Yeah. Wide hopping. open. Mm -hmm. Jump, jive, and wail. Um, now, though, you're at a really cool intersecting space because you could take action to preserve the integrity of your pineal gland. It's still alive in your head. It's not like you're, you're like your mama, 50 years old. I've got to struggle for every vivid dream I, I can get. <laughs> you know, I got to work for it. But you still have a lot of that. Um, do you meditate? Hardly. I'm getting into it. Oh, okay. okay. I, you're on. my mama. I know it. I know it. You have got to tell me. I'm, I'm working on it, getting more, you know, getting back into it. Uh-huh. All right. So how about your inner narratives? <laughs> how about your, how about the things that you're saying to yourself? You know, that's so important when we're not paying attention to the things we say about ourselves, we, we become what we think. Are you paying attention? I'm putting you on blast in front of everybody. We're doing it. <laughs> I'm into it. I'm into it. I need it. It needs to happen. We're doing it. What about that inner narrative and the things that you say about yourself to yourself and the things that you say about the world and such? How's your inner world going, my love? Um, it's, it's getting better. Um, my wife and I were trying to eat more healthy starting now we're into it um i know that makes a big difference i want to get out um walk amongst nature we're in the mountains everything like that um but when things are muddled out it's um it's really hard to to kind of connect into it i really need to you know i still have it i can take a second to be like okay i really want to be involved in this but it's it's hard it feels like almost like weights are are on my shoulder when it comes to mm -hmm. that almost. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I find there are times where uh, me and Kara will meditate and it will come right back. It's, it's, you know, you need to, being present in it really makes it come forward. It really, being in the space really makes it come forward for you, for me at least. And I, and I really think that you should pay attention to the reality that just meditating once brings it back. Meditation is the cornerstone of intuitive ability. Like if you want to be psychic, if you want to, if you want to connect spiritually, if you want to manifest, like manifest your ultimate purpose, right? Whatever your dream right. job is. Well, I know what that is, but it, the cornerstone of that is, is a meditation practice. And the thing is, is that people think it's got to be this long drawn out, like one hour every single day. Nobody got time. We don't have time for that. You can yeah. do very simple meditations. You can do just like a body scan or you can just stop for like a minute, two or three and just, you know, rhythmically deepen your breathing, connect, you know, focus on your third eye. There's so many different things that you can do that are very quick that really, really help you stay connected. Yeah. I want, I want you to do that because one thing about you and everybody else listening is that I don't want you to live a life of drudgery. One thing I can say about myself that's really cool, <laughs> if I do say so myself, <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, mother. One thing, I know. <laughs> but one thing I can say about myself is that I live a life by my design, you know, and I live a life based on what I want to do with my life and what my purpose is, what I came here to do and what I came here to be. And I spend I work really hard, but I spend every day doing that. And I, one of the things I want you to know and everybody else is that life does not need to be drudgery. And you don't have to be slave labor at some corporation working for somebody else's dream. Do you yeah. feel like that? Do you, I, I want to catch you early, Alyssa. I want you to start getting that entrepreneurial light worker spirit because you came here to do something so powerful and it's in you. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Yeah. I do. Um, I do. It's... 
the drudgery is difficult, but I'm doing small little things to try and make it a little bit better. You know, at work, we can listen and watch Netflix and stuff. And I've gone closer to listening to like binaural beats and rain sounds and stuff like that. Just even little things like that, really, it's, it's like an energy can just wash over you and you're like, okay, all right, I can pretend I'm in a forest with light beings or whatever. It's, it, <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big change, even just changing a little minute thing that, that's in your consciousness all the time. Yeah, it's, it's really a quality of life thing. And to really hold a belief in, in your spirit, in your heart, that you did come here to do something so powerful and you came into this life with everything that you need. Now, it might not feel that way because maybe you haven't unpacked it all. Maybe you're not at that point, but you have absolutely everything that you need. You wouldn't have come here if you didn't have all the resources and I just want you to feel that. And I want you to live your life on purpose. And until such time as you can do that ultimate thing that you came here to do, just be the light in your life. Yeah. Just be the, the beautiful soul that you are. And you're such a kind person, Alyssa. You're such a good hearted person. Like get in your car and just vibrate to that, you know, or yeah, go for a walk and meet people and just vibrate to that that's what being a light worker is and you're already that as far as I'm concerned oh thank you Alma I try I try to keep the light in my heart it's hard sometimes y'all it's hard yeah but well what do you think makes it hard um work really makes it difficult I mean I know a lot of people here they're still in nine to five jobs they don't necessarily fulfill them it's it's really difficult to get past that especially with being a light worker, um, it's just, it's hard to get past it because you've got tons of people who are in the same space as you are and it's not necessarily the space that you want to be in. It's, it's, it's difficult. It definitely is, it, you know, especially all that's been going on with me right now. But it's, it's a process. It's little things in yeah. time and knowing for yourself that you are a light being and knowing that you have the power to change things. You have the power to be exactly what you want to be in life. You have the power to do all of these things. And I'm realizing that now. So it's still a process. So can you tell me why you have the power? Why do you think you have the power? I think you were totally coming to this earth meant to have the power. You had the power from the beginning. I think life gives it to you all different kinds of ways, telling you you don't have the power, telling you you need to conform to this nine to five job that doesn't make you happy that you're totally not into, that it's about something when you'd rather be working with animals that raises your high vibration. It's just you, you're born with the power to do what you want in life. And it's, it takes a long time to unlock that, I think. At least for me, it's been taking me some time. You know, I'm struggling with inner issues and stuff. But um, every, everyone has it. You just, it's, yes. it's a... It's a time of, of getting there. It's, it's a process. Well, I, I hate to lecture you. I, I hate to, for you to feel like you're being lectured, but let me lecture you for a second. I'm joking. Let me totally just to it. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so the reality is that being born isn't what gives you the power. Being a soul is what gives you the power. And you bring that power into the earth plane, into the incarnation with you. You come in as a divine being, which is why you've got little babies looking. Like the first thing, one of the first things you ever did was, was say, talk to my father who had been deceased for years who I never talked about. Like you were two or three years old talking about that because you came into this world divine and totally connected. But the world is sticky. The reality is sticky and it gives you amnesia. And so the goal of the life is to ever be aligning back to the vibration, that which makes you feel love and that which makes you feel joy because that's God and it exists inside of you. Yes. That's who you came in as. It's about returning to that, which is why I would really love for you to be and Cara to be in Lauren Antelfermo's Body of Light class because She's all about following the emotions, like what's happening in your, your body, in your mind, in your spirit, and using that as a kind of GPS system or a compass to get you 
on the path of illumination for you and and taking the physical cues in in the earth life to get where you're supposed to go and it's just a way to connect so much more profoundly with your life and so lauren can my daughter take your class that'd be cool please come on lauren take <laughs> Lauren, Let's go, Lauren. Would that be all right? <laughs> because I think it's it's one of those programs that will change a person's life. So I think that's something you should really get into. Um, I'm into it. But I have to say that you know I am so proud to be your mom. And I remember when I was younger, and I was just a free radical, bumping into everything, damaging stuff. I didn't get it, but I I always felt in my heart that. All I wanted to raise was a good person, just somebody who wasn't mean and somebody who would see an underdog and want to help them and somebody who just contributed to what the planet needs most. And Alyssa, you do that every single day. And I am so very proud of you. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see what beautiful things happen for you in your life because you're so beautiful and like attracts like. And so it's destined to happen. On that note, I was wondering if you would like to do some readings for the Lightworkers Lab. Now, I know it's been a while and it's, it's a little muddy. We've got some rusty faucets and that's cool. What I'm going to do is ask everybody watching right now, if you have a question for which you would like some intuitive insight, you can begin asking those questions now. However, one caveat, keep it short. Um, because I can't always open up the comment and I can't read the entire question and, and Alyssa yeah. might not be able to read the entire question as well. So keep it brief and remember that I'm not on very often, which means make this a really good question <laughs> because what we're going to do is we're going to connect in with our emissaries and with source energy and with high vibration energy to bring forth answers for you and so let's use this time as productively as possible for your soul now i will take the i'll be the point person on this but Alyssa, if at any time you want to pull a card because didn't mommy buy you a deck yes you bought me two no, decks i'm into it well one of them was on kelly nelson's recommendation and the other one was from ariel sterling's recommendation why don't you show the people what what we got okay we've got of course, keepers of light keepers of light Yes, it's a into good it, and then the Blue Messiah reading cards. These currently are my favorite. The energy in yes. these are fan freaking tastic. Yeah, fan freaking tastic. So, um, if you want to, like, if if I'm reading somebody and you want to just do some shuffling, pull a card, I would highly recommend that you do that, and then, okay. uh, but, but you don't have to. So no pressure, because I hate when. You know, I feel pressure to do that. You know, I love these cards already, so I'm just going to pull a card for people that we read. What, what, what could go wrong with pulling a card and then just looking up the little answer in the book and trying to really also activate your intuition to sort of see into it a little bit on those deeper levels? I think it's powerful. And maybe what I'll do is, if you don't mind, I'll kind of coach you a little bit through your process, which is good because... On Friday evening, we are having our very first ever lab psychic development circle. Lauren Antofermo is going to be the, the teacher on Friday night, and we're going to be doing this type of thing. We're going to be doing side-by-sides with people, helping them to do intuitive readings. It's going to be so fun. Why don't we get a head start? If you don't mind, I don't want to, like, mom you to death. Do you know what I mean? Um, no, you're not momming me. <laughs> All right. I know what Let momming go. is. <laughs> okay. I know I'm, I, I try really hard not to mom you too hard. Okay, let me go here. Hit me with a card. Um, Maria Vento said, hit me with a card. Do you want to hit her with a card? I can totally do it. Um, I'll do the, does she have a specific one, Blue Messiah reading cards, or was it just any? any well, what do you think? How do you feel about that? Um, I'm feeling the Keepers of the Light. I'm really gravitating towards that one. So Get it. We're going to go with that. You know. Get, 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 get. Maria Vento. I like to say the name sometimes, like once, two times, or three times, just to get the energy because sound is a conveyor of energy. It moves it around and it starts activating different images. Just an idea, just a thought. Maria Vento. 
I got, oh my God, Mother Mary. <gasps> Mother Mary. Mother Mary. Beautiful card. It says, let go of the need to be right. Choose peace. Mother healing is possible at this time. Cool. Yeah. Are you going to go into the book? I can indeed. I think mm -hmm. you should. There's a deeper meaning. Now, when I, when I tap into the principle of Mother Mary, it's always this nurturing, like, take care of yourself, be kind right. to yourself, make sure that you're receiving what you need and that it's not just all being poured out for everybody else. Right. All right, let's see. Extended message. This is the time to let go of conflict or the need to be right. The more you fight for the point you want to prove, the unhappier you will be. Pointing out the mistakes or mishaps of others just blocks the road to love in your own life. Mary, the Divine Mother of Acceptance, is now with you, encouraging you to forgive. All right. It's powerful. Yeah. You grew up in the Catholic Church. Do you still have an alignment with um, Mary? Yes. You do? do? Yes. I think, I think that's cool. Oh. All right. Personally, is Ro Rose Espinosa would like a general reading. Rose Espinosa, Rose Espinosa. Why don't you pull a card for Rose Espinosa? And I'm going to get my tried and true tarot cards. I don't know if you remember these, Alyssa. These, I've had them for. Yep. Ever. Grew up with them. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to pull one of the uh, Blue Messiah reading cards for. Okay. We're tag teaming Miss Espinosa. Yes. Espinosa. Right away, Miss Espinosa, you've got some uh, guides and emissary energy coming through uh, on the left side. So this would be more spirit guides or just uh, those guides that are the closest to you, helping you on your path with a message of support, surrounding, being surrounded by your guides just so that you know that you're not alone. And if you ever feel like, oh, you know, is this real? Are they there? Am I supposed to be doing this? This this, this message of infinite support um, very strongly coming in for you. So your, your guides are around. They're here with me, and they're also around you right now as well. And so look for something. What I'm getting on this end is I'm getting a constriction of the scalp. I'm also getting goosebumps, and I'm getting a lot of energy in the head as as this activates. And so it, look it, in your own physical body for electrical rushes and things of that nature, because this is likely how they also present to you as maybe goosebumps and stuff in the head. I'm also going to pull a Celtic for you, but Alyssa, do you want to read the card that you got for Miss Espinosa? I do indeed. So I already love this card. I've seen it before. It's Blue Star. Beautiful Ooh. card. Again, into it. All right, let's see. Blue Star. The Blue Star is your guiding light through the darkness and serves as a reminder to the blue flame of truth burning within your soul. All right. Yes. I love that. All right. The cards that I pulled for you, Miss Espinoza, say that you're at a crossroads in your life right now and that you're going to have to take action to resolve whatever is happening or whatever is coming down the pike. Now this can be something that's present in the life, but this can also be something that may be entering the life. And so being decisive is going to be very important for you and also uh, planning and organization and knowing what it is that you want to do. You might be at a crossroad. You might be, uh, you stand before uh, two roads say, and you can go this way or that way. And spirit would say to take the more spiritually dynamic path for you being called in this direction. Also, um, be careful about who you surround yourself with. And this is so important for all of us because the people that we are around are changing who it is that we are. And they do that through energy because, of course, we're all just energy and energy talks to energy. And if we're around people who are negative or if we're around people who just bring us down, this changes our energy and ultimately can change the path. So this is not necessarily to say that you have a lot of these people, but just caution. Be very mindful about who you're letting into your inner circle. Projecting out um, what the cards are saying is to be open to unconventional ideas. The truth is not necessarily what you've always thought it was. 
in fact, the truth is not what it seems. And the more you explore, the more you expand your consciousness, the more you are going to experience. Do not be afraid, because here again are these spirit guides saying, we are protecting you. Also, in the next three to six months, you enter into a space where your personal power, you step into your personal power, greater understanding potentially through learning, also potentially through projects, things that you do, things that you initiate in your life. You're going to command the respect of people around you. I don't know if this is in your workspace or if this is a family thing or just whatever it is that you put your mind to, you're going to be commanding respect for it. New creative ideas are coming. So new path, pick the spiritual path, Follow the energy, spirit says. So wherever the energy is stronger, that's the way that you want to go. You can always trust that high vibration equals God energy. A lot of good things coming, but be careful about who you surround yourself with and plan. Be organized. That's your message, Miss Espinoza. Thank you for asking the question. So Catherine Hudson wants to know if she will be married by the end of the year. Alyssa, do you have your pendulum? Do you still have a pendulum? I don't have a pendulum, actually. <laughs> I don't get it. I do. Now, a pendulum. I'm growing, I'm growing my crystal collection. You, you got to give me that. And I got the new tarot cards. We're making it work. All right, which is fantastic. Um, I'm trying to remember. I have to see. I've just, I just want to go back and make sure I've got her. Catherine Hudson. All right. So with a pendulum, okay, we're going to school, guys. With a pendulum, what you want to do is you want to make sure there's not a lot of tension in your arm because the tension is going to make the pendulum move in a certain way. You also want to make sure you're really feeling energetically neutral because if you want a specific outcome, that's what the pendulum is going to give you. But this is really great, Catherine, because I don't know you, and so I don't have a dog in this race. So whatever the outcome is, is what it is. Now, before we actually ask it, whether you're going to be married by the end of the year, what I like to do is just ask the pendulum to show me a yes answer. Can you show me a yes answer? And the pendulum is turning counterclockwise, which is interesting. Normally it's clockwise for me. So that's why I always check because pendulums, you know, they change their minds. Thank you very much. I, then I'll take it to the middle. And then I'll say, will you please show me a no answer? And there it goes. It's going clockwise. So tonight, my pendulum's no is clockwise. And the yes is counterclockwise. And so what we would like to ask is, and by the way, when working with a pendulum, keep it simple, sweetie. Don't ask a super convoluted question because your pendulum's just going to make up stuff. you got to be very, keep it down to one sentence, make it super, super simple. All right, thank you. Will Catherine Hudson, I'm going to take it to the middle, will Catherine Hudson be married by the end of this year? Yes. That's the answer from the pendulum. And again, totally neutral. Don't need, don't need it to be anything on my end. The answer was yes. So there you go. Oh, Trisha says she usually gets counterclockwise for yes and clockwise for no. Well, that's interesting. That I th It's happened rarely with me. Lori Twilliger wants to know if she's going to start dating again this year. What do you think, Alyssa? Alyssa, what I'd I'm like you to do... No, no, no. What I'd like you to do, Alyssa, is just to go, just like let everything fall away. Close your eyes, if you will. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale all the way out. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to give me the first answer that you receive. Is Lori going to start dating again this year? get a no I got a no as well I got a no and a sub did any subsequent message come along with that um almost as if um it shouldn't it shouldn't be the focal point right now it's there are there's other work that is to be done 
for you personally, almost like, um, like you need to work on yourself a little bit more, um, become more in tune with what you really want. It's what I'm getting. So at the, at the moment, um, you need to know yourself a little bit better. Know yourself a little bit better, and then you, you will be ready. But I don't, I don't feel it for this, for this year. Absolutely. I got that it's just not the right time. But it's not too soon into, like, 2019. But there is just, there's just some focus you, to point your interest at yourself and to do all the things that bring you joy and are good for you and get you in that super high vibration, keeping in mind, of course, that we attract who it is that we are. So if we're high vibration, if we're healthy, if we're in a positive state of mind, well, that's the kind of people we're going to attract. So there's just a little more time and space for you to enjoy yourself and for you to enjoy the space of this time. And then, boom, you can move into it. And also, yeah. you will get into a relationship of significance. Uh, one, two, three. They so show two relationships that are just fun. You know what I'm saying? Wink, wink. Have fun. Life is short. <laughs> On the third one. So the first two are dalliances. Very quick. We're just sticking our little toe in the water is it cool can i get in and then on the third one we have some sticking potential is what i'm getting for you Lori. all right let's see what else we have do you have any questions in, can you read the feed Alyssa, and see if any of those questions light up for you let's see if you would um, i'm just gonna keep my eyes closed and if you would read the name and the question for your mama. Okay. All right. I see um, Stephanie uh, Nisi or Nice. Uh, why does Arizona? What was that again? Why does Arizona what? I think she froze. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> we Sorry. had a flash flood warning for Arizona. Okay. Speaking of Arizona, uh, I think she's Arizona. Okay. Um, yeah, it was. Um, Stephanie Nice, I believe. Stephanie Nice. Yes. And Why does Arizona any... keep coming up for me? Also so attracted to cacti. Because in Arizona and similar desert spaces, you have you are a match for those types of spaces. So in your energy, so we're all energy, right? At our most foundational and we're energy that's moving around in a pattern. And some of us have patterns that align with the mountains. And some of us have patterns that align with the water. Some of us have patterns that align with the desert. And when we go to these, uh, these geographical places, it's like we lock in and we become potentiated, amplified, and magnetic. And so there's something, there's something it's, it's really a lot of desert spaces can give you this, but there's karmic stuff for Arizona, meaning potentially past life stuff where you were in that geographical location, but also the grid of who it is that you are. And of course, we're walking around in a field. This field is a grid and there are intersecting byways and highways and there are access points and there are uh, lock-in points that lock us in with various grids. And so you are a grid and your grid is a really great match for the grid of Arizona. And when you get there, you'll feel better. For example, when I was in Chicago and Alyssa, you can testify to this, I was sick all the time, all in and out of hospitals, in and out of surgery, yep. sick because I was not a match. My grid was not a match for Chicago. I left Chicago. You know, a sister likes to eat and they got good food there. But when I moved to Colorado, I was, remember making that trek across all those states? Yes. And I, I had, <laughs> I had just had surgery and I was weak. Within a month or two of getting to Colorado, I was healthy. I was thriving. Yep. I was strong. And because I was a match for that particular grid. So that's why Arizona keeps coming up for you. And also, again, when you get there, things start to, things start to line up for you and happen as they are supposed to, according to the highest version of your blueprint, the highest version of your life purpose. Do you have anything to add to that, Alyssa? Or do you want to pull a card? Um, or it's, Stephanie? It's, um, it's mainly just things it's the things will change if you were to visit Arizona or if you were to live in Arizona things will change for you you will feel um, like you said more energetically aligned I know I felt the same way with the mountains 
um, and so did you, and so does Clara. But um, once, if if you're seeing signs like this, like you need to go to Arizona, give it a shot. Go go as a vacation. See how the energy feels with you. I know that I needed to go to Sedona <laughs> to realize, oh my God, this is where I'm meant to be. Um, but just um, really try try and give into that. Go go out to Arizona, see how you feel, and um, see if it, see if it works for you. I bet it will if you're if you're seeing it so much. Am I meant to move there? She's asking. Well, I, I like what Alyssa is saying. I think you should visit there and see how you feel. See how the energy of your body feels when you're there, because I sense there's going to be a quickening. And also, don't be shy to get into meditation on your own behalf um, and ask spirit what spirit has for you and whether that's a match for like an, a total relocation. Spirit, if ask and it shall be given knock and the door shall be opened unto you. If you ask God, like, what am I supposed to do? God always answers. The issue is us just listening or even bothering to ask in the first place. So if you ask that on your own, uh, spirit will answer, but I'm getting a, I'm getting a, I'm getting a visit, check it out. But I'm also getting behind that a yes, but it's, it's a, it's a majority. Yes. And what does that mean? It means that Spirit speaks to me in uh, percentages. And so sometimes somebody will say, should I divorce this guy? And I'll be like, uh, 60% yes, 40% no. Sometimes I'll get numbers like that. And so there's a yes to moving to Arizona, but it's not a 100. We're, we're looking at like a 65, 70. Go there first and see how you feel about it. Yeah. All Check right. It I just saw some stuff moving. Um, I'll pick the next question and then you do the next one. Okay. How about that? I'm into it. Okay. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, what I do, um, Alyssa, because I know you're going to start going up live in the light room just to practice and get back in the groove. Let's groove tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, and what you want to, do, what I always train my practitioners to do is not like take them in the order that you receive them. This is not a call center. Rather, kind of just look through the feed and see what kind of resonates for you or has a tug for you or what lights up for you. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to go with Ronis Moore. Um, she just wants a reading. Any messages that she needs to hear? Why don't you put a card for her? I'm going to get my trusty, my trusty tarot cards just to do a general, but a little bit with some specifics. Keep in mind, Ronis, that this, is project, this projects out three to six, three to six months. And then the final card for me is usually like eight to 12 months. So this is future facing with some information about energies that might be able to do right now. Ronis, Ronis, Ronis. When I shuffle, what I do is I wait for my third eye to spark and I literally see a pinprick of light with my eyes closed. You having fun, Alyssa? You digging it? Yes, I'm All digging right. it a lot. Same card, Hierophant, reversed. You too must be open to unconventional ideas, which I know that you are, um, but maybe uh, some expansion, Ronis, for you. Um, and this, this is in the form of learning and also leaving systems and philosophies behind that don't serve you. Um, moving forward, spirit is going to want you to do that. Um, you also have in the card that represents you, the querent, you have the chariot, which is from the major arcana. And it's, it's, it's essentially a, a card of success and the possibility to be really successful in your life. Um, the card of personal power, of overcoming, of having all that you seek to have. However, there's some other energies around that, which would indicate that you might be a little indecisive about choices in your life sometimes. And spirit would say, be decisive, make make decisions and act on them
also is there some, there's some noise in your background Alyssa is there noise in your background no somebody running water or something no just stopped how very weird okay um, no. uh, also meditation is important for you to receive very specific information about steps that you need to take going forward for yourself and this this intersects with this expansion of understanding and knowledge and i don't know if this is like certification courses learning a, a certain kind of modality stepping into the power of your light work and the things that you came here to do whether that's healing whether that's teaching whether that's reading whatever that is for you like there's an expansion and maybe some learning that needs to take place in order for you to fully occupy that but when you do lots of success lots of success but be very decisive make a decision let's move we can't just um, want things and put things on a vision board we have to take action steps in order for them to actualize and also in the eight to twelve months out an excellent time for projects starting something new using that which you're so passionate about and creating something from that there's going to be just an alignment a window that takes place where you're going to be able to do those things that you really want to do and, and i don't know what's on your i don't know what you don't hear that no, there's nothing happening. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a window that opens for you so that you can actually achieve your goals and really start a project that's powerful. All right. Did you pull a card for Ronis? I did. All right. It's another really beautiful one. I love the colors for it. It is hope. Oh. Love yeah, and acceptance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it says, love is yours. Recognize your divine worth. Choose loving thoughts. Let's see. Let's go a little more into it. Okay. Angels are gathering around you in celebration that you are finally willing to see how loving and lovable you are. Hope is here with her legion of love angels guiding you to see that you deserve loving relationships, um, loving experiences, and loving acceptance from the world around you. That's a powerful card. I love that. Yeah. They have your back. They're there with you. They have your back. They know that they see you. They're there with you. I wanted to tell you, Alyssa, that I keep my tarot cards, which are very accurate, in the same box that I've been keeping in it for years. But what I do in order to keep them really, really high vibration is I have just special things in my box that cause me to feel deep, deep love. And that love, that energy is the closest that we can get to God energy. And so I wanted to show you what some of these things are. This is from Tutu's hospice. Do you remember they, they gave us that shawl that they wrapped around her when she was dying? Yeah. yeah. This is a, little, this is a little, um, little thing. It says, the word shawl came into the English language in 1662 from the Persian word shawl. Shawls have been made for centuries. They are universal and embracing. They comfort and unfold, wrap and warm mother and hug provide shelter and beauty those who knit and receive shawls are loved and blessed this blessing is for you i also have the shawl another thing that i have here is i don't know if you can see it probably can't it's you it says dear tutu with d-e-r dear <laughs> tutu i love you you were probably five when you wrote that and on the back it says, Dear Tutu, I love you so much. It's so really old. But I, I, I keep this along with some of the last things that she actually wrote with her own hand. One was an herb called es Essiac, which contains four strong herbs. And the very, and I think she was trying to heal her cancer. And the very bottom, it says, don't cry over something gone. Smile that it was. Mm -hmm. so it's like this list of herbs and a website. And then don't cry over something gone. Just smile that it was. I've got lots of these little notes that you've written to and when you were a baby. And look at this little picture you drew. <laughs> Do you remember that? I was an artist. 
<laughs> well, here's what. Remember in Chicago, I just said I was sick the whole time. And you were, I think, four or five. And you wanted to draw a picture of me. I was, my body was the bed. <laughs> you actually drew my body as the bed because I was constantly sick in bed. And that's you on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> my mom laughed so hard. She's like, you're a bed. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I want to get out of this bed. But it I makes kept sense it all. to a four-year-old. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. And then this one, dear Tutu, I love you so, Maith. M-A-I-T-H. I can't fit it in the whole wide world. It is so sweet, hon. Anyway, these things give me such joy in my heart. They make me think of Tutu. They make me think of you. They make me think of the three of us spending so much time together. And they just bring me so much love. And I just put my cards right on top of them. And I don't think there's anything that could charge them more than that. Just a tip. If you've got little things that, you know, you really love or, or that make you feel what I'm feeling right now, which is my heart activation, like include them with your, your, your tools and the things that you use to connect to spirit. Because love is the fastest and most powerful way to connect with spirit. Just thought I would share that with you. Perfect good to know all right why don't you pick somebody to read what time is it it's 8 20 let's do a couple more you want to i'm into it all right let's do it what lights up let's see okay i have jalita floyd uh she says my anxiety Oh, no. My anxiety is high, but my energy is low. What can she do for this? That's what I got. Something that popped out. Can we bring Lauren on? <laughs> this is Lauren's <laughs> wheelhouse. Well, but you have anxiety sometimes, don't you? Yes. Her anxiety is high and her energy is low. Do you have any thoughts about that? I do. But I don't want to know if you do. Um, let's, let's hear your thoughts first. Okay. I want to I hear think, what you have to say. Uh, what's coming through is empathic leak or emotional leak, which is a term that I got from Lauren Antoine Fermo. Um, but it's like leaking out of energy because you are empathic by nature. And so you feel, whether you know this or not, this is a, a form of clairsentience, a deeper heightened form of clairsentience. You feel spirit messages through the physical body and you also can feel and sense into a space and into people like you just have a sense in the physical body uh, also quite sensitive and without management when you are really really empathic there can be drainage that happens and people like you can take on too much energy and it depletes your own so that is the first yes. thing that comes through uh, with regard to the reason your energy is low and the anxiety is also kind of a mirror thing because anxiety uh, spiritual activity can present as anxiety and other somewhat uncomfortable feelings in the physical body. It's actually an indication that you're sensing on a higher level. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. The anxiety isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means that your psychic feelers are out and that your grid is turned on, but you're not managing it. Like you're not in control of what's coming in, when it's coming in, how you're moderating it, how you're using it and releasing it. And so what I like to teach people is the pulse technique. And this is where you just get into a meditative state. You deepen your breathing, you get into the receiver position, which is where everything falls away. You're not thinking about anything except being very present. And then I like to fill up my body, mind, and spirit, starting with the body and extending out to the aura and then extending out into the field. I like to fill it with white light. I just visualize that in my mind's eye until it's so bright and so white and so powerful. And when it's filled my sphere, my grid, I begin to pulse and pulse. And what I'm doing is I'm holding the intention that with each pulse, all of these byways, highways, and avenues in are brought into alignment. And the leakages, the porous nature of the aura, the porous nature of the field, those are repaired. And as each pulse happens, everything is brought into alignment. 
So you shore up your grid, you shore up your field, and you protect yourself this way. And you also heal anything. See, with anxiety, it's like a misfiring of energy. The energy's not firing in the right way. It's not being processed in the right way. We've got blockages. And with you, we've got some programming stuff. We've got some belief stuff. We've got some childhood stuff. We've got some stuff in the actual physical body extending out into the emotional body that is causing the energy as it runs through to stop here and get routed there, get routed there and then intersect here. And so it's not being, it's not running in the right way. And so when it stops, when it gets redirected, when it gets, uh, when it gets, sorry, I start stuttering when I'm channeling, when it <laughs> stops, when it gets redirected, when it's routed into an area that it's, it's not in alignment, it feels in the physical body like anxiety or like a tension that's happening. It's just the energy. And so with the pulse, you're actually clearing out the grid. You're clearing out the perforations. You're bringing all of those things into alignment. And that's my recommendation for you. What, what, what was her name? I forget, but many blessings to you. Um, you Jalita. Yeah, Jalita, I think. Jalita, um, I love that name. Yeah. I pulled a card, actually, because I'm digging these cards. I'm vibing with them. And the card that I got was Conscious Words. Uh -huh. Is that Conscious the Grinch? Words. <laughs> I think it's one of those uh, aliens from Avatar. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> um, Conscious Words. Okay, tell me, tell me about words. that card. All right, let's see. So it says, words, the currency of thoughts, can be used to empower or disempower individuals or nations. When thoughts are translated into words, they transform into vibrations. This card comes to you uh, to ask you to bring awareness to your words. Sometimes habits can be formed through the use of various words, words that serve to disempower your ability uh, to attract the life that you want. So it's um, the way I guess I'm interpreting it for you, Jolita, is that you're, it's almost like you're using your words against you. Um, like, like you're, you're cutting yourself down or you're, you're speaking ill about yourself and you're bringing this into existence. It can add to the anxiety. It can add to uh, your projection into the world. I know that, um, if, if I'm, you know, if I'm feeling too much energy, I get anxiety and it, it does drain me a little bit. So I know a lot of people in the lab can definitely relate to that. Um, but use, use your words well, really, really channel that light into yourself and, and speak, speak well of yourself, be your friend and, and channel that light en energy into yourself is what I'm getting. Yes, because as a person speaks, so they are, and we only speak what it is that exists within us. And I learned that from Kelly Kalin, who I was a part of her virtual summit. So I want to attribute that correctly. And she said something that I had never thought of. She said, well, we can only speak or express that which exists inside of us to some degree. And so watch what you're saying because you're creating with the words that you speak and watch what you're thinking and watch what you're feeling and be very mindful of this. Neville Goddard says, don't indulge yourself when you're in a bad mood. Don't allow yourself to start thinking about an argument that you had and getting really upset about it. Never indulge that. Instead, always change the way that you're thinking. Change the way that you're speaking. We talked about this a little bit at the retreat. We talked about the power of positive languaging. Sometimes to fix something that's out of alignment within us, whether that's a depression, whether that's a fear, whether that's a relationship issue. Sometimes the key to just fixing all of this is speaking in a different way and speaking life and positivity and productivity and and inspiration into existence, it reaches the physical body because don't you know, everything you say and you think the body hears it and the body doesn't just hear it. The body actually receives that as a directive. And what is a directive? A directive is an instruction. And so when I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm old. Oh, I'm fat. Oh, I'm tired. All of these thoughts and these words are received by my physical body who says, okay, I'm not gonna judge that. That's just what you said. That's what yep. that's what's living inside of you. And I'm going to express that out through the physical body. And I get tired and I gain weight and so on and so forth. So just changing the languaging sometimes is all it takes to change yep. the inner world. Thank you so very much. All right, let me see if there's some people in here that I'm that light up for mommy. Who lights up for mama? <laughs> Scroll. We got a lot of people. Of 
Clarissa says, Crystal, you're an awesome teacher. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Mahalo. Okay, Anne-Marie Mochio, Machio, Anne-Marie wants to meet her spirit guides. Okay, well, the first thing that you need to know, Anne-Marie, is that your spirit guides are with you. They're there. Um, so it's not a matter of them coming to you and presenting themselves to you. It's a matter of you getting into a certain kind of alignment so that you can perceive them. Another uh, misnomer or the, is, is the idea that we all experience our spirit guides in the same way. Like a spirit guide just sort of descends from the ceiling and says, behold, Anne-Marie, this is the message I have. No, this is not how it usually works. It, it works very rarely in that way. Sometimes it happens, but it's very rare. Sometimes we just feel impressions from our spirit guide. Sometimes it's just a little nudge. Remember, this is a free will dimension. And what that means is that our guides and our emissaries cannot make us do anything. All they can really do is tap, tap, tap. Hey, Crystal, are you sure you want to do that? Or, hey, Crystal, what about this cool idea? And it usually enters into our awareness as our own thought in our own voice. However, when we set the intention to rendezvous and interact with our spirit guide, when we go into a meditation and say, it is my intention to rendezvous and meet my spirit guide, they always show up. And if we stay in that space and give them the opportunity, they will make themselves known. But it might be subtle in the beginning they never kind of rush in. Usually, let me rephrase that. Sometimes they do. Usually, especially when we're just beginning to open up, they come in like a breeze. They come in very softly. They enter on the periphery of our lives just to give us ideas. However, one way to activate your spirit guides to be even more evidential and dynamic and loud, if you will, in your life is to give them specific permission to do so. Because once they have your permission then they can get jiggy with it. Then they can come into your dreams. Then they can start speaking to you in visions. Then they can start really giving you those impressions through your psychic receivers so that you can understand and know that they are there. But without permission, it's this. Crystal, are you sure you want to do that? And it's in Crystal's voice and it's Crystal's thought, making it very easy for me to just dismiss because I'm not always listening to my own thoughts. So the first thing is to have the intention to have the rendezvous with your spirit guides. The second thing is to take that intention into a meditation where you have that experience. And what you do when you get into that meditation is give them specific permission to be more evidential and present themselves to you. And then they will ask and it is given knock and the door shall be opened unto you. This is a universal law, universal principle. That's all we have to do in order to get a reaction or a response from the universe. But don't forget that you have to actually be paying attention. So many of us say, God, just answer me. I need this answer. And then we turn and we start making dinner. And then we get into a fight with our kids. Then we go to bed and then we wake up and go to work and we're not paying attention. We're not listening for the answer. Spirit will always give it to you, but you have to be present enough to be observing what's happening in your environment and listening. Anything you want to add to that, Melissa? Um, I know um, in terms of my spirit guides, when I was younger in my teens, I would meditate a lot and I would go, I would envision um, a place. For me, it's, a, it's an open field with a big tree in the middle. And I would always imagine walking up to the tree and on my right side, I would see my spirit guides and I would say hello to them. I would ask them what their names are. I would say, what's your main purpose with me? Do you have any advice for me? And um, really, it's, it, it can be as, as easy as that. All you have to do is say, I, I would like to meet you. I would like you to be in my life. I want guidance from you. And I noticed I would go into my meditative state. I would have conversations with them. And they would, they would be present like that. So if you haven't meditated um, to see your spirit guides yet, or um, you're still trying to do so, keep doing it and they'll, they'll present themselves to you and they'll help you out. And you actually bring up a really good point because I think people go into these sort of visualizations, these um, imaginative spaces, and they think, oh, this is just my imagination. They yes. may see somebody step, from, step out from behind a tree and they're having a conversation with Jesus or with Buddha or with a monk. Yeah. And they're thinking that they're 
doing it all themselves, when in reality, they forget that the imagination is just as real as the physical reality. And what happens in the imagination is actually happening in energy. And so your imagination is powerful. And anything you can visualize, anything that happens there is real. So pay attention to that. So try to do those visualizations. Don't discount what happens. Don't discount the messages that you get and say, oh, that's just me with my wild imagination. Nope. You're actually meeting your spirit guide and you're actually receiving messages. Yep. All right. Let's do one more, my dear. I'll let you pick it and then we shall sign off for the night since we've just been jibber jabbering this whole time. God. All right. My let's doggies. do it. Chine, chine. Oh, God. You're so pretty. The doggies miss you, by the way. I miss the puppers. Yeah. Oh, love to see them. Well, you got to visit your mama. <laughs> you got to visit me. I ain't got no money, honey. I'm coming, girl. I'm coming to Arizona December 14th, 15th, and 16th. We're going to meet yes. up with the Ariel Sterling. We're going to meet up with the Chris Hoffman. We're going to meet up with the Amy Robinson. We're going to go sing karaoke. Maybe Trisha can come and bring her clogs. It is going down in Arizona in December. You better believe it. Okay. I found an interesting one. Uh, Anne-Marie okay. um, Mocosio? Mocosio? Probably butchered that. Um, she says she feels the need to um, communicate with animals. Let's see. Oh, I just, I just lost it. Come on, y'all. It goes fast. Yeah, it does. But I saw it a couple of times. She feels the need to communicate with animals. Like, that's um, something that's coming out to her. Um, well, um, yes, Trisha, I see you in the feed. You can absolutely come to Arizona. I insist. We will have so much fun. Um, we okay? Second. Trisha Carr is our resident animal communicator, and uh, she, Trisha, is your class available right now in the advanced learning section of this Lightworkers Lab page? If so, what I would ask that you do, just, just as a tip, is to go to the top of the page um, to the announcements. There's a graphic that says advanced learning. Click on it and then click on the link. There's all the classes that we offer. And I hope that one of them is Trisha Carr's animal communication class because that class is fan freaking tastic. She gave it live just this past summer, and I'm not sure if we've made it available passively or not. But Trisha, can you give some? I'm I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm I'm never going to present myself as anything that I'm not. I'm a terrible medium, and I'm also I still haven't gotten the hang of animal communication. Alyssa, do you do you communicate with your bubbies? Um, more so energetically. It's, um, so she's feeling a need to communicate with animals. Is that what she's saying? Well, how would you recommend that she do that? And then Trisha, can you pipe in in the feed and, and give her some advice too? Yeah, for real, Trisha. Um, but I mean, personally for me, I'm not, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm kind of in tune with it a little bit, but it's also an energetic feeling. Anything that I feel is normally energetic and I don't, you know, I don't like get words in my head saying what they're saying, but it's a very... Um, they're creatures too. They're very high vibration dogs, especially cats too. Oh my God. I love cats, but they, um, <laughs> it's a feeling I feel tugged toward them. I can, I can look at my dog and I, I look into her eyes and I almost know what she's saying to me, or I, I have this feeling. I'm like, okay, she, I, it's just, I don't know how to describe it. It's totally a Trisha Carr moment, but, um, Trisha Carr moment. Well, I'll tell you what I do. Like when I'm out of town and the doggies are at doggy daycare, I like grieve for them. And yeah. what I'll do is I'll, I'll lie in my bed and I'll get into my heart, which is to just start thinking about them and loving them. And, oh, my God, Cole is getting so gray. And isn't he the cutest baby ever? And I'll start getting that heart activated. And once that opens, because it's a portal, I'll then what, what I visualize is sending like hearts through my heart to Koa at the doggy daycare. <laughs> I'm like, I hope I can receive them. But there's been times when I've been like sitting on the couch with all three Danes and in my mind, I'm just yelling at them, Koa, Koa. Yeah. And nobody looks at me. Nobody, nobody notices me. It's not like they hear me. So I don't <laughs> think I'm doing it correctly. And so I'm sorry to whoever asked that question. I don't think, I don't think uh, I can Marie. tell you. Oh, Marie, let's see, let's Trisha see. says that she has some videos on YouTube. Go to YouTube, look up no. Trisha Carr. And check out her animal communication videos. 
Someone else says that she explains it as energetic communication. So kind of like what I was, what I was going into, just kind of feeling their energy, feeling them out. Maybe if you, you touch them, you feel a bigger vibration with that. It's just, um, as far as I can tell, it's a, it's a feel, you know what I mean? It is a feel. Well, I, 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 I don't know. So, I mean, I'm just going to say that I'm, I'm probably not the right person to ask, but if you're feeling a tug to communicate with animals, then I would definitely recommend that you take some sort of a structured course, not unlike what Trisha offers, um, and, and learn how to do that and, and what the animals themselves need and, and how they communicate, how they express themselves, how to read that energy, and then the things that you can do to reach out and connect with that. Um, and uh, Trisha has some videos, and she has the class, and just pursue it. Because if you're feeling a tug to it, then that might mean that you're also an animal communicator yourself. And we have a lot of them in the lab, just a ton yeah. of them in the lab. And so it's got to be one of the most beautiful ministries because bless the beasts and the children, because in this world, they have no voice and they need, we need people to be able to communicate with them and see what they need. And did you know that Trisha Carr connected to Gunner? You don't know. Did I tell you that Gunner <gasps> went blind? No. no. <laughs> What? My my brother's dog, he's got a mini uh, schnauzer named Gunner, and um, he just went blind one day. He's only six years old. He's a little baby. What? And he, yeah, he got really discombobulated, started walking into walls. Apparently, he's got cataracts, and so he's having cataract surgery in November. But everybody freaked out in the Milligan household, of course, because you know, my brother's crying. He's such a big baby and so I got in touch with Trish and I'm like Trisha can you talk to Gunner and the the conversation she had with Gunner was so amazing I actually sent it to my brother I just copied and pasted it and he called me crying he's like that was probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever read because Trisha said she was interacting with Gunner and and she said well is there anything else I can do for you and Gunner said can you can we pray for my family and so Trisha and Gunner prayed for the family and then it wasn't just the members of, of Jesse's family. It was all the people that the members loved and all the people that those people loved. And it became this beautiful, like, spiral of moving light with all these different people and with Gunner there, just kind of like a wizard. And she's like, dude, Gunner's an old soul. He's he a is. very wise, beautiful doggy. Trisha's got the talent for that. She does. Anyway. He's blind, um, but he's getting better. He's mapping. He's mind mapping. Although I guess sometimes he Blair witches, you know, he's just staring at a wall. He thinks he's <laughs> at the door to go out and Jesse's finding him in the den. And he's just like, this is not supposed to be able to go out. Yeah. A little gunner. Anyway, I want to just, first of all, thank you, Alyssa, so very much for being with me tonight. I, I'm so proud of you. And it just makes me, it fills my heart with so much joy to get to show you off to the community um, because there are just things in my life that I treasure beyond words. And you, my dear, are one of those things. Hey, how did I get so lucky to get the best girl in the whole wide world? I was born that way just for you, mama. How did I get so lucky to get the best mama in the whole wide world? I was born that way just for you. We have contracts, girl. We came into this life to shift it. And we're doing that together. And I'm so proud. We're doing it. And I cannot wait to see you in the light room. Can I get some hearts for Alyssa? She needs to start getting up in the light room, give some readings, start sharing your story. It's powerful. And you'll see if you just put yourself out there and lean into it, your intuitive abilities, that baseball player, that nun, they are all going to come rushing back and you're going to find yourself in, in this huge spiritually diverse ecosystem and i just can't wait i'm here for it Woo! get thee into the light room <laughs>